Chris, Kevin. Good evening and welcome to the regular city council meeting for the city of Bella Vista. If you'd rise and join us please for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do the roll call of council. Councilmember Wozniak? Here. Councilmember Lloyd? Here. Councilmember Flynn? Here. Councilmember Fowler? Here. Councilmember Bork? Here. Councilmember Wilms? Here. All present. Thank you. We'll move into citizen input. First is Lori Troutwine. I apologize if it's if I messed up. <laughs> if you'd like to come and use the microphone, that'd be great. Is it proper to ask questions because I have some questions about the new fire station? No, I can just say no, my... No, probably not. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we can chat afterwards if you like, sure. All right. Well, I've been here about two years now, and this is the first I've heard about a new fire station and where it's being located. And I was concerned about the traffic issues because you're locating it closer to Branchwood Rec Center. Mm, not much. Not yes. much. Well, that's that's part was part of my question sure. that the property is going to be this there's a lot of traffic going in and out of Branchwood and mm -hmm. I would suggest that the new fire station be put on the east side of that property to give anybody pulling in and out of Branchwood an extra couple of seconds once they hear the, the alarms going off or the trucks coming out because if it's placed on the corner of Edinburgh and Glasgow they're going to be coming straight out and there's going to be people in and out of the parking lot and brakes jammed and everything else so okay uh, the fire chief is here tonight as well so if, if you want to uh, chat with us afterwards i'm happy to do so okay thank you great thanks so much arian So what I'm passing out is just um, a summary of contract that we've had with the city regarding our property, the home. And we're here today to clarify. Um, we recently received a threat of legal action from the city uh, stating that we lied to the city about our property status and wanted to clarify that today. Um, a hole in the wall is a new business in here in Bella Vista intended to be a campground. In May 2018, prior to our purpose of purchase of the property and prior to hole in the wall being formed as a business, our lead founder, Steve Otan, approached the city asking about the rezoning process for the hole in the wall NWA. Um, I'm sorry, for the property on Chelsea Road in hopes to understand. At that time, in writing, which you'll see on the first page of the staple document that I passed out, Steve stated that he was interested in a property that he believed were within the city limits of Bella Vista. Mayor Christie and Travis Stevens later took a meeting with Steve. This is prior to the purchase of the property and prior to the forming of Hole in the Wall NWA, in which Mayor Christie and Travis Stevens represented that the sit, uh, the property in question prior to purchase was in fact not a city property but was a county property. This was represented to us and it was also confirmed later in an email which is found in the second page of the staple document from Travis Stevens stating that he had checked with his own planning department um, and it was not on record. So Steve thought, wow, this would be a great property to develop this on as a county property, began to assemble partners. Um, as any business was due, we conducted due diligence with the city. This included meetings with Travis Stevens, um, who was the, the, I believe, the director of business development at the time, <coughs> me meetings with Mayor Christie, and checking public records as well as running a title check on the property. There was no public record of this being a city property that had been annexed. See, what had happened is that the city had intended to annex the property in 2015, but did not file the paperwork, which is required by state statute. And as a result, as a good citizen conducting additional levels of due diligence, we were not able to figure out 
that it was a city property or that the city represented it as a city property. The, we checked titles, we checked GIS, we checked public record. We in fact confirmed with the mayor and with Travis Stevens. The only place we didn't check was Wayne's desk, unfortunately, and that's where it was because the city failed to file it. And so later in the year, um, uh, in September, so this was after the purchase of the property, Hole in the Wall did not form as Hole in the Wall and did not purchase the property until all this due diligence had been run, confirming it was county property. After all of this, um, we purchased the property in July, and in September, we received a note from the city stating that they had found an annex order, which they failed to file. Throughout the paperwork, you can see the city's stating that they did not file. It was their mistake. In November 2018, we sat down because we were unable to come to resolution around zoning and um, stated that we were going to proceed with legal action due to the clerical, clerical negligence of the city. And at this point, um, Jason Kelly and Mayor Christie decided to avoid legal action due to their clerical negligence that we would agree that Hole in the Wall could continue to operate as a business and as a campground and small event venue. This letter was provided to Hole in the Wall um, on December 7th, 2018. Last week, we received notice from the city that they were reneging upon their written agreement and plan to pursue legal action against us. Um, I called Mayor Christie after this, since we've always had a very amicable relationship with the city prior to this. He would not take my calls. He referred me to the third party legal counsel that the city of Bella Vista has hired and is paying with taxpayer dollars to fight a small business over something that is patently untrue. In the letter that was sent to us by the city, they accused us of lying and misrepresenting. But as you can see from all the paperwork, we never lied, we never misrepresented, we relied wholly on the assurances of the city, which proved to be incorrect, and, and now suddenly it's our fault. So with that, I just want to put it out there. Unfortunately, the city's legal counsel isn't returning our calls at this time, nor is Mayor Christie. And we found out um, recently that we were on a discussion last week amongst the planning committee, and so we want to be here to, to share our piece as well as we'll come through, of course, our attorneys. And would be happy to any of the citizens in the room to explain what happened after this meeting in more detail, as well as provide you a copy of the letters from the city. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Oh, wait, wait, okay. Ariane Grazian, oh, Hole in the Wall, NWA. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. I thanks. appreciate it, Erin. Okay, that ends the citizen input. We'll move on with the agenda. The first is the approval of minutes for the February 25th council meeting. I trust you've all had a chance to look at them. Are there any errors or omissions? I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Bork? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Carried. Okay, thank you. Moving on to reports. There's the monthly financial report for January of 2019. Are there any questions? And I did send you today an email about the February tax. It seems to be coming back in line. We don't know what happened in January. I have a call in to Judge Mooring to see if he has any clue because it it impacted every city in Benton County. The Trafalgar Road uh, fire update. Um, since our last meeting, the governor has signed a bill into an act freeing up $20 million for ADEQ on top of the $7 million that they already have access to. So that's a good news story. Um, I've been watching all through the weekend and today there is being a lot of equipment that is now on site because ADEQ has signed a contract with a um, private contractor to build an access road that will go around the area and to also build a weir and a containment area. Um, Thursday, late in the day, I received a call from ADEQ about 15 minutes before they released a, a press release in which they actually gave a very high level of the preliminary response action plan as to what they're going to do out there. And you could click on a link and it went down a little further, but not much. And they said that it was going to be 
at a very high level. And they're asking for citizen input, which is great. And um, I would encourage anybody who has some thoughts or whatnot to take them up on it. I have some thoughts uh, that I'll share with you. Um, I have a concern about residents' welfare, especially during the day when they're going to be doing this work. I need to know what the plans are. Um, I'm also concerned about traffic safety. Uh, the chief and I were talking about it today. The entrance and the exit onto Trafalgar Road is very steep and they're blind curves and there are going to be a lot of trucks moving around. So how do we get over that? I also uh, have a concern um, about the road itself, Trafalgar and wherever else they're going to go. How many thousands of truckloads are we going to have going on that and what's it going to do to the street? And is the state going to pave it for us or are we on the hook for it? And finally, um, they're going to be using a technology called Air Curtain. Um, it's way above uh, my understanding, but I would like to know if it doesn't work, is there a plan B? And so I'll be submitting out all of this into the state uh, from the city's perspective, but I do want to stress that if you have some thoughts, this is your chance because they're going to close the, uh, the public comment time on April the 5th, after which so they tell me they hope to put together a final statement of work or scope of work, it's an SOW, then go to bid so that they can get moving on it. The good news is when the first draft came out from NSAFE in January, they said it would take 17 months to actually put the fire out and excavate. This plan says they can do it in six. So we'll see what happens, that's an improvement. Anybody have anything to add? No, nope. okay. I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules and read all proposed ordinances and resolutions on the agenda by title only. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call. Council member Wilms. Aye. Fowler. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Bork. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Thank you. We do have one piece of old business. It's an ordinance amending the Bella Vista zoning ordinance and map to rezone property described in rezoning petition number 2019-29955, county parcel number 16-28062-001 from R1 residential single family to C1 neighborhood commercial. Um, it was tabled until this meeting at the last table at the request of, of staff. Staff is now requesting that this be tabled indefinitely, which basically kills the, um, uh, the ordinance. And the reason is they were originally seeking just part of the property to be zoned C1 so that they could put a sign up under the assumption that the rest of the property where they're going to put an office is actually C1, it is R1. So they need to go back to the planning commission and start over again and by doing this, it cancels this one so that the path is clear for them to bring it uh, to the, uh, the Planning Commission and ultimately to Council. So I'd entertain a motion to uh, title indefinitely, please. So moved. Second. All in favor, we'll go roll call. Linda? Yes. John? Yes. Jim? Yes. Larry? Yes. Doug? Yes. Steve? Yes. Carried. Okay, going on to new business. The first ordinance is approving the partial vacation of a subdivision plat detailed in application LSP-2019-30229 pursuant to section 10736 of the Bella Vista City Code. Staff is requesting that we go to third and final. In your packet, you can actually see all the documents it was approved by the, uh, uh, the Planning Commission and it's um, not going to result in the taking of any personal property whatsoever. It's a realignment uh, due to the original plat. Are there any questions at all? I had one. Sir. Did the Planning Commission approve it unanimously? Emory Service, I believe they did. I believe they did. Yeah. Derek, did they? I believe they did. Yeah. 
The, only, the yeah. only question I have, I just had a chance to look at it a little closer after the work session. I'm just curious how a, a, a plat line in a home, how it ends up, the home gets placed on a plat line, or did the plat come after the home was built? Don't know. I'm just curious. You know, just I could ask Derek afterwards. I can tell you that when we were paving Cedar Crest and, and, and Suits Us, Suits Us is not where it is on the plat. But it, been, it had been in play as a used road for so long that it superseded the plat. This may help answer your question. There are a lot of homes in Bella Vista that are built on top of property lines because there's more than one lot, but the line is still there. And so uh, this is not in the, the Bella Vista POA part of Bella Vista. This is uh, in the planning area jurisdiction. And so there was a structure built on top of a property line and they wanted to adjust this line, but really it amounted to a, a modification of the subdivision boundary, if, if memory serves, mm -hmm. and so it requires this little special process. And so it, it, it could just be they're wanting to section off a piece to sell part of it or something, but they need to get that line moved. It, it, but I'm not entirely sure what their rationale was. Okay. But that's how that can happen. It's under common ownership. Is, is the space that we're looking at here, is this a gap in the, between two surveys? No, I don't believe so. No, no. I, I'd, I'd have to, we had to bring up the planner to, to verify that for you, but I don't believe it was. Did you look at your docks at all, Larry? No, I didn't see it. Okay, it's very, very small. It's a slice. Yeah, it's a very gentle slice. As and as council mentioned, it's outside the city limits, but it's within our zoning? It can't be outside the city limits. No, it's in the city. It's got to be in the city. It, 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 it is in the city. I'm sorry, it is in the city. Right? Okay. It's got to be in the city. I, I misstated that, sorry. Okay, any other comments? Okay. I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules and move to third and final. So moved. Second. Okay. Councilmember Lloyd? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Four? Yes. Carried. Six zero. Okay. This is an ordinance for the third and final reading approving the partial uh, vacation of a subdivision plat detailed in application LSP-2019-30229 pursuant to section 107-36 of the Bella Vista City Code. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right. <clears throat> Councilmember Bork? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Carry at 6 0. Great. The next is an ordinance granting Black Hills Energy, Arkansas Inc., doing business as Black Hills Energy and Arkansas Corporation, its leases, successors, and assigns a natural gas franchise and the authority to construct, operate, maintain, and extend a natural gas distribution plant and system, and granting the right to use the streets, alleys, and other public places. Uh, within the present or future corporate limits of the City of Bella Vista, Arkansas, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Okay. Can you visualize the property that is between Walgreens and Cry Like on the east side of 71? Okay. That piece of property um, has received planning commission approval to actually put three retails and a restaurant in there. The owner of the restaurant, it turns out, only cooks with natural gas. And so he asked the owner of the land if natural gas could be brought in, and the owner of the land said, sure. Well, it's not quite as that easy <clears throat> because there's no franchise agreement between the city and Black Hills Energy. The closest gas, by the way, is over by McDonald's, so they have a little bit of work to do in tunneling under 71 and County Road 40 to get it out. But before they can do anything, we have to have an agreement with Black Hills. Some people is that, have asked, so does that mean that they're going to bring natural gas throughout all of the city? No, that's not the plan at the moment. It's just to service this one request. So that's what originated this ordinance that we're uh, talking about this evening, and again, it's a request to go to third and final because this is holding up the actual digging and putting in this, uh, this much needed shopping area. And then it also will declare an emergency in a separate motion. 
so that it can move faster. Is there any question at all? Sir? Uh, I was wondering if a representative of Black Hills was here that I could ask him a question. Yes. Okay. Um, my question has to do with the fact. Uh, yeah, which, whichever one would be appropriate to answer a question. If you come up to the microphone. Yeah, you could come up to the microphone. Sure. 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 <laughs> Thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it. This is what my question had to do with. I, I noticed that the agreement said it was exclusive, that you would have the exclusive for natural gas in Bella Vista. And my understanding is that when your company representatives talked to our mayor, they, they indicated they had no interest in having natural gas around. Just, this was just a one-off, so to speak, for this one restaurant. They weren't really interested in developing natural gas in Bella Vista. So I was wondering if it would be possible to have the exact same agreement, only say that it was non-exclusive. I'd be concerned that someday someone else might be interested in uh, developing natural gas in Bella Vista, and you wouldn't be, and then we couldn't do it because you have the exclusive. Yes, I, I, I'm not sure we would be interested in <coughs> looking at additional developments, uh, the idea is not to pipe the entire Bella Vista at, <coughs> certainly at this point, and probably we've looked at that in the past. And so, yes, would, would we be willing to look at other developments? Of course we would. Um, but uh, th this was primarily to do with this, yeah. one, this one lot. As far as, I don't know, what would you think about the exclusivity of well, I think I think the basic premise that you first stated is what we would say is not quite accurate. It's not true that we are not interested in expanding in Bella Vista. As opportunity arises, um, and provided the projects are economically feasible, you know, uh, taking into consideration how far we need to extend pipe and the costs, we would, um, provided you, all circumstances are right, be interested in expanding. Mm -hmm. So would you be willing to do the exact same agreement, only non-exclusive, or, or would you not? Um, my initial response, we can take it under further consideration, but my initial response would be we've, we've not done that in any other community in Arkansas with whom we have franchised. So I don't. Can, can I ask you a question? Do you have a protected area that by the Public Service Commission? In other words, does Black Hills have the right to provide natural gas to, say, this entire county, or there, do you expand that area as you expand your system? And then if that's the case, then are there other companies, even in Benton County, that you know of that would be capable of providing natural gas service to this area, even in Arkansas at all? No. So it's you or nothing, basically, if for natural as gas. As far as natural gas, yes, sir. Because the investment required sure. is, is substantial. And that's why we have franchise agreements. And, and, and just so for the benefit of the council, and I, I talked to Mr. Flynn about this earlier, you know, the reason these are exclusive typically all over the place is, number one, it has to be financially feasible for the company to put those pipes in the ground and to have a certain number of customers. But number two, from the city's perspective, do you want three different gas companies digging up your streets, digging up your sidewalks? and running different meter trucks and all that sort of stuff. That's why you have one, basically one electric company, one gas company, one phone company that typically serves a community. So is that, did I misstate well, anything well with that? Said, yes. Yeah. Well, I am encouraged that you would conceivably be interested in if other situations arise that are feasible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank we're, you. That's we're all basically on the south side, this side of, mm -hmm. of Bella Vista. Yeah. And then we're, we have gas available on the on the west side uh, near the bypass so that would be the most economical ways to to expand the system and to to uh, serve more uh, potential uh, properties in, in Bella Vista okay thank you appreciate it you bet any other questions while we have the folks here with us thank you for coming out tonight thank appreciate you. it appreciate it Mayor Christie, I do have one other question, oh. not not for okay. not for them. We've tagged on to the end of it, uh, declaring an emergency, and I understand that's for 
purposes of expediting, but could could somebody explain kind of what what the necessity no, of that right, is okay, and so kind of what the timing okay. saved so, is by making so this an emergency? According to the state constitution and state law, ordinances and, and uh, take effect 60 days after um, they've been approved and published. Um, if you want them to become immediately effective, then they have to contain what's called an emergency clause, which says that basically, and, and you all determine this, that, that immediate application and uh, immediate effectiveness of the ordinance is necessary to preserve the public health, safety, and welfare, and should become effective immediately for the preservation of those things. So uh, it's a separate vote. So uh, you can adopt an ordinance and then not adopt an emergency clause, which means it just waits until it becomes effective. One of the one of the questions that's come up in the past, not for this particular group, is a little bit of confusion about when we waive readings and bring things to a final vote quicker, and then when we talk about their their when they become effective in terms of when they become applicable law. When we suspend the rules and say go to third and final reading, we are expediting the process of voting, uh, bringing it to a final vote. Whenever we adopt an emergency clause, then we expedite the date in which it becomes legally effective after it is voted upon and approved. So those are the so, so we have one ordinance where we're reading it by title only, and it does refer to declaring an emergency. Mm -hmm. But it's a separate vote. But we're going to we're going to split it's a them separate out. Vote. The clause okay. is voted yeah. separately by state constitution. It's a little okay. awkward, but that's what the state constitution okay. requires. All right. So this, then that means we're voting on this three times. It means. It, I mean, if we go ahead that way, because we've got to do third and final. Because we're going to third and, and final, and then it, we'll have a separate emergency. vote on the emergency. Okay. Yeah. You, you would. You would. If, if you want to finish this tonight, which is what the administration has requested, next vote will be a motion uh, to suspend the rules and move to third and final reading. There would be a vote on that. If you approve that, then there would be a final debate, a motion to approve the ordinance, a second, then a vote. Assuming you adopt that, then there would be a motion and a second to adopt the emergency clause. Okay. Thank you. And so we can get a much-needed restaurant in here perhaps a little faster. Any other questions? The only question I would have is how how much does it shorten the effective date by adopting the emergency clause? It becomes effective it becomes immediately, immediately upon right sixty days. Immediately upon publication. So as soon as Wayne, Wayne gets it in the newspaper, paper. it's immediately effective. Okay. Yeah. Takes sixty days off the process. Anything else? Okay. I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules and move to third and final. So moved. Second. All right. <clears throat> Roll call. Councilmember Lloyd? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Bork? Yes. Carried 6 0. This is an ordinance granting Black Hills Energy Arkansas Inc. doing business as Black Hills Energy and Arkansas Corporation, its leases, successors, and assigns a natural gas franchise and the authority to construct, operate, maintain, and extend a natural gas distribution plant and system and granting the right to use the streets, alleys, and other public places within the present or future corporate limits of the city of Bella Vista, Arkansas, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Is there any discussion? <coughs> then I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay. <coughs> Councilmember Bork. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Wilms? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Carried? Zero. And do I have to suspend the rules again? No, just add for okay. a motion to approve the emergency clause. So just a motion to approve the emergency clause. So, so moved. moved. Yes. Second. Okay. Discussion? Discussion? I, I don't feel like, I'm, as much as anybody else, I'd like to get another restaurant in Bella Vista. I don't feel like that was the intent of uh, being able to declare this an emergency. I don't find the health or the welfare or the safety of Bella Vista citizens to be at stake here. So just in order to kind of protect the intended use of a declaration of emergency, I'm not feeling this one. Okay. Anybody else? Any more discussion, John? Well, I think you could argue it, it's good for the welfare of the citizens. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Will it detract at all from the uh, proposed project schedule? I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen the project schedule other than I know it's been delayed. Because of this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had a gentleman trying to invest in our community for quite a while now. I know this has been going on, you know, for a good period of time, so it's time to move forward. Anything else? Okay, ready for a vote? Okay, we'll do a roll call. Councilmember Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Bork? No. Lloyd? Yes. Carried 5-1. Okay, thank you. We'll move into resolutions next. The first is a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with Cooper Communities, Inc. for the purchase of land on Glasgow Road for usage as a future fire station in the amount of 57000 plus any applicable closing costs. Any discussion? As we noted, I, I, at, sorry, Mayor Christie, I, I would just say, in in light of the comments that we had earlier today, that that a lot of work has gone into finding an appropriate piece of land that's available to the city. Uh, I I appreciate the the uh, sensibility about its location relative to Branchwood. However, uh, this this land is uh, is being made available to us. It's very close to the existing property, mm -hmm. which has worked out well. I think for the city, and with that in mind, I, I think this particular piece of land makes sense. Okay. Anybody else? Just so all of you understand what's happening, fire station number three on Glasgow was built in the mid 80s by Cooper Communities. There has been a lot of building since then, and it has a tough time serving. It's a two man operation. Um, it clearly is not going to satisfy uh, what we need in the future. The building and the land permits in, are just increasing rapidly on the, on the west side, which is a result of the uh, bypass. So we had a look at the current one, and it made more sense to buy the land across the street. It's almost across the street, and it's three acres. It's actually a much bigger parcel. So once uh, this is approved, if that happens this evening, then it has to go to the Planning Commission, and we have to go through a lot split and everything else just like any other person and um, we really need to have a fire station that's going to provide adequate protection for the residents on the far west side other than what we have today the plan is if this all works out and we can find the funds to build a fire station um, the current fire station would be raised and in its stead, we would put in a sand and salt storage area similar to what we put in on the east side. And if you've been up to the street department, there's a very large one that's up there as well. Because the theory is, if we have a bad snow event or an ice event, Mother Nature isn't going to stop so the trucks can all, all go back to one central depot, fill up and then get back on the streets again. We need to have scattered areas where they can actually go in. This area does not have a lot of residential. It's been done that way on purpose because of the sirens that uh, are, um, are from the fire station from time to time. So that's the eventual plan, but we're probably quite a piece away from doing that. But we might as well get the land while we can and start preparing for the future. So that's what's driving all of this is the increased building on the, on the west side. You've heard me speak about it before. We have to stay ahead of the growth. We can't let the growth manage us. Well, to, to your point, I'd spent quite a bit of time this afternoon on the GIS map just clicking all the way down Glasgow, and there really isn't any land available. No, very uh, little. Other than that piece on the corner, it's, it's a pretty, pretty sweet piece of land for a fire station. It's flat. Anything else? Is, is the uh, size of the parcel that we're looking to buy uh, adequate for the long term, the long haul needs for fire protection at this location? Yes, Chief has said it's three acres, and that's more than adequate. Yeah, we're only on a half acre right now. And it'll go out for 30 years? Anything else, Larry? Okay. Anyone else? Okay, you'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. <coughs> Councilmember Lloyd. Yes. Flynn. 
Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Bork. Yes. Carried 6 0. The next resolution is approving the mayor's appointment of Demara Titzner to the uh, Bella Vista Arts Council for a three year term, replacing Dave Barfield. All the various committees uh, that we have, and also the commissions that are within the city, everybody sitting on there has a term, and we have a staggered term, so they all just suddenly don't come together at once. Um, although uh, you're going to see at the next one that that's not necessarily the case. But Dave Barfield has done a marvelous job. He's, he's instituted the uh, Artist of the Month. And if you remember, um, we had a blues concert on July the 3rd of last year below the dam before we fired um, all the fireworks. That was a huge success. And uh, they've actually been able to get us our first piece of sculpture that is being uh, donated by a fellow up in Missouri and we expect that to be arriving soon and it'll be actually outside the main entrance way to the fire station uh, number one and the police station so it's nice to see that the arts are finally coming back into the community there was a very active um, arts presence here many years ago but it has since dwindled and it's nice to see it coming back again. So any, any uh, uh, discussion on the appointment? And entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call. <coughs> Councilmember Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Bork? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Carried 6-0. The next is a resolution approving the mayor's appointments of Gary Young, Tim Hall, John Nuttall, and Stanley Moore to the Bella Vista Board of, of Construction Appeals. This is a board that seldom ever meets. In fact, I can re can't even remember the last time that it met. This is the one exception. For some reason, when it was first set up, all of them came due at the same time. And that's probably something we're going to have to have a look at. But in the meantime, we have to get these uh, reappointments done in case there is a need to call the board together. Are there any questions at all? Would you mind, Mayor Christie, just kind of repeating, I was reading it today, what the purpose of that board is? Mm, let me go and have a look. The I understand it's to appeal uh, Bella Vista City staff decisions around on, construction on applications. Construction. Mm -hmm. Derek, is that correct, Doug? Yeah, that is correct. It very, very seldom happens. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Okay, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. <clears throat> Councilmember Bork. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Lloyd. Yes. Carried 6 0. The last resolution is authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with first employment staffing in an amount not to exceed $37,565 to provide personnel for seasonal right of way mowing for 2019. We have 550 um, miles, and if you double that because there's two sides of the road and we have six tractors, um, so rather than hire permanent staff to do this, and then in the wintertime, there's virtually nothing for them to do, it makes more sense to go out and contract and get temps to come in and actually do it for us. Um, we do go to bid every year for this, and it's the same company that always bids back. No one else bids for some reason. Um, and so we tend to get the same workers who are coming back. They're very familiar with the streets. They're very familiar with the wonky angles that we have on some of the curbs. Um, and we've never lost a tractor yet that I'm aware of. Thank goodness we haven't lost anybody else either. But that's, that's why we do this. It is seasonal. And come the fall after the last cut, then the contract is canceled. And we will wait till the next spring to do it again. Are there any questions at all? Entertain a motion to approve. So so, second. <clears throat> Councilmember Lloyd. Yes. 
Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Bork. Yes. Carried 6 0. Meetings and announcements. The next City Council work session will be Monday, April 22nd, 2019, at 5 30 in the Bella Vista District Court Building. The next regular meeting of the City Council will be Monday, April 29th, 2019, at 6 30 p.m. at the Bella Vista District Court Building. The Planning Commission work session will be this Thursday, March the 28th, 2019, at 4 30 here in the court building and the Planning Commission regular meeting will be April the 8th, 2019 at 6.30, again here in the court building. The Board of Zoning Adjustment will be April 16th at 5.30 in the Bella Vista District Court Building if needed, and the Board of Construction Appeals will be April the 9th in the Bella Vista District Court Building again if required. Sir. Go ahead. Are you wrapping up? No, I, I should have said something when we were you know, you were given the uh, overview of the where we're going with the Trafalgar Road fire. Mm -hmm. um, but so I, you, as difficult and as hard as it's been on the residents and everyone, I think, feels their pain. And maybe the, you know, the uh, the help wasn't didn't come as quickly as it, as it should have or could have. But finally, it's here now. And, you know, that's great news. And I just, you know, for the I, it's not out yet. Right. I mean, we still have some more time here and there's going to be some citizen input, but at least it, it's going to start happening. And that's great news for the residents that live out there in the city of Bella Vista as a whole. But, you know, there are a lot of people involved in getting to where we are today mm -hmm. and making the funds available. The governor, uh, you know, Tom Cotton came here. Uh, Bozeman came here. Womack. Uh, Jim Hendren was just absolutely huge, you know, from over in uh, Gravit, our local state senator and putting the, the, the uh, appropriations bill forward and actually uh, the state of Arkansas as a whole because, you know, helping, you know, come to our rescue to get this thing put out. And I, I'd also like to say, too, just being a council member, and I'm sure other council members saw this as well, but the work by uh, Peter Christie, um, by Chief Sims at the fire department and Cassie Lapp, um, we certainly heard, you know, uh, from the residents at the council members but then on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, those are the three individuals that really, you know, heard m a, a brunt of the citizens' complaints uh, during, you know, from mo on a month-to-month, -month, week-to-week basis. And I'd like to thank them for all their help because, trust me, they were working night and day uh, to get this thing taken care of. So I uh, really appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Anything else before we... All righty. We are adjourned. Thank you for attending. Doug, Doug. Yes.